Right, the reason that we should be doing the breathing today is coming down here this morning to San Diego. We were coming on Route 405, which is equals Neshima breathing. And, uh, and equals the Geomatria Yehirakia. Let there be a firmament. As we said, that this is the one firmament whose name is actually firmament, Rakia. So in particular, that saying, the second of the sayings, of the explicit sayings of creation, Yehirakia, let there be a firmament, equals breath. In the Shema, 405. Is this fitting to the model? Or is it like going to happen? No, this now is a continuation. We're continuing now the, the letters. The letters belong to that Rakia which is explicitly called Rakia, the second, the second from the bottom. And as we said, the letters begin with the Aleph, that in Sefer Yetzirah represents the air of breath, the spirit of breath. And here we have an, a, a very practical exercise of breathing that we can conceive and try to integrate all of this, uh, all of the information that we've uh, given over just now. As taught in Kabbalah, breathing, the breathing process has four stages to it. All of it takes place as a cycle within the mind, as it were, within the head, even though the air goes down into the lungs and then it goes back up to be, to be processed and to be sent to its respective limb in order to arouse its respective sense. The four stages of breath are shi'ifa, which means inhaling. The first word is shi'ifa, means to inhale. The same word as shefa? <coughs> as what? As shefa? No. no shi'ifa means to inhale. It also means to aspire towards, to desire, to aspire. Ish'of. But as a physical process, a part of breathing, it means to inhale. And then comes blima. Blima means to hold to hold the air, to hold one's breath. <coughs> this is the word, one of the basic words in Sefer Yitzhirah, the word of the Esther Spirot Limad. In each one of the ten Spirot is called a hold. Each one holds itself, controls itself, well defines itself. That's called Blima. Then comes Neshifa, which is to exhale. And then comes Menucha, which literally means rest. And rest means that before one begins the cycle anew, there is a moment or a few moments of rest in between. So this is a cycle, a four-stage process. In the Sfirot, this is Keter, this is Chokmah, this is Dat, and this is Bina. It means that it creates... a cycle like this. From Keter, the Shifa is in at the level of will, it's aspiration, it's Keter, point number one. Then it goes to the power to hold, the power to hold is Chokmah, <coughs> then the exhalation is Dat, under the inhalation, and the rest, which is opposite the Opposite the, the holding of the breath is Bina, which in Kabbalah is called the world to come, the world of rest. And then one goes back to aspire anu, which is to will anu. To will a new reality, a new phase of life. As every inhalation is an act of will of aspiration, aspiring to achieve a new level of life. And that's the way it works. Why does it work like this? Because the basic verse that breathing is based on in the whole Torah, the very last verse of Psalms, that reads, Kol Haneshamata Halelka Halaluka, 
every soul, and Chazal say, don't read it so, but read it called Hanashima. Every single breath of life shall praise God. And what name is used there for God? Yud K. Yud and Hey, the first two letters of the four letters. Only those two letters are quoted, and those two letters are the letters of mind, of Chokman Bina. So from here we learn that the whole process of breathing is a cycle around the two letters Yud and Hey. Kol Hanashama, Kol Hanashima, Tahalel, Yud K, Haleluka. This is the Yud and this is the Hey. But this is the coats of the Yud, the crown above the Yud. That's where it begins from. And this is the lower pathway called the Shvila of the Yud. When you write a Yud, if you'll see here, the Yud has a higher point and it has a a lower pathway, it's called, a shvil at the bottom, that connects it to the hay. So actually, all three first stages of the shifa, the bliman, and the shifa, are all <coughs> the elements of the yud, the coat of the yud, and the body of the yud, and the shvil, the path, the lower pathway of the yud, that connects it to the hay, the menucha. The rest at the end is the hay itself. And so every breath is an expression and a praise of Yud K. Kol Haneshama Tahalel Yud K. Hallelujah. All right. Now there are many, many hints about these words and what they mean that we will not now go into. So now the question is, in order to make this into a viable practice, we have to give some ketzev, some rhythm to the process. And for many reasons, again, which we will not now be able to go into completely, we'll just give some little glimpses. The <coughs> basic rhythm, and this does not say how long is each beat, it's just a proportion of beats. The beats can be longer, and then the whole breath becomes longer, they can be shorter, and then the whole breath process, the whole cycle becomes shorter. <coughs> but the ratio, the proportion of the beats that one counts to himself, as it were, until he begins to breathe it without having to count, just naturally, are 8 to 4 to 6 to 5, which spells out a word which is chedva. Chedva is joy. <coughs> 